Hello and a warm welcome from the home of golf, St Andrews, and the Open for the Ages. Joining me, Nick Doherty, in the commentary booth are Ewan Murray and Butch Harmon, with Iona Stephen out on the golf course. Well, guys, what a final day we have ahead of us. Oh, for sure. So many of the big names in contention for the game's greatest title. It should be a very special afternoon, Butch. Absolutely, Ewan, and I don't think any of us can figure out who's going to win this thing. But there's our final pairing. Wow, the two greatest of all time. So let's get down to the first tee with Jack and Tiger. On the tee, Jack Nicholas. <laughs> Driver for Nicholas taking this down the left center. That's fine. On the tee, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods going with the iron. Twirl of the club, he loves it. Perfect shot, chasing it down the firm fairway. Excellent position. They take the journey from the first tee, the grand building behind them. Over Granny Clark's Wine and into the battle for the afternoon. It's a wonderful final twosome, but there's some pretty good pairings out there. Rory McElroy is alongside Ernie Els today. And McElroy has got off to a reasonable start. It was a slow start to the week, but this is the sort of quality he's produced recently. And Ernie's touch pitch uh, has to be admired as well. Well, Ernie Ells was up for the occasion. This is a great start for him. Yeah. Beautiful putt for Bertie. Ernie and Rory on the way, as is John Daly and Jordan Spieth. Two of your fellow countrymen who I think could be there at the death this afternoon. Oh, they're going to give it a good shot. A very interesting difference in personalities as, as we watch JD. Get going. Uh, lovely shot. Jordan Spieth, birdie putt at four. Oh, he's used to making those. He can't believe it didn't go in. Nevertheless, the start they have certainly have them in contention if they can find a run of birdies. So what of these two, Tom Watson alongside the South African, Louis Oosthuizen. And Tom Watson's been in blistering form over the first three days. Getting underway just half an hour or so ago. His tee shot at the first. Perfect position. Look at the stands, look at the crowds. Fantastic, beautiful swing of Louis Oosthuizen. Under control, in balance. P2, off to a good start. And finally, another pairing that will take plenty of spectators out there with them. Nick Fowler, of course, a specialist here at St Andrews, and the same can be said for Severiano Ballesteros. Two, three times champion as we watch Sevi off the first tee. Nick going with the iron. Johnny. Yeah. He likes it. As he should. So just a taster of those who will be watching over the course of this final round. And it's sure to be a, an afternoon of twos and throws, ebbs and flows, swings and roundabouts as well on the back nine. This was Faldo's second to the first. It's not the easiest pin position today. <laughs> he sure made it look easy with that shot, that's for sure. Wonderful start for Nick Faldo. Seve also found the putting surface. His putt for a birdie. 
and all but. So three for Fowler. He makes the early move, just a par for Sevy, and that's how tight it is at the top of the leaderboard. It's take your pick from a who's who of golf. This could be a very special day. Oh, I think it's fantastic. We're at the greatest home of golf at St. Andrews, the greatest championship in the world, the Open, and I can't wait to see what happens. The great names, the two-time champion, uh, Greg Norman, 86 and 93. Gary Player and Lee Trevino, Trevino winning back-to-back -back in 71 and 2. And the same story for Paul Drake Harrington, just a few years further on. Great serve, Arnold Palmer, back on the Open links. Be sure to join us. That's the way you can connect with us over the course of this final round. I'm sure you know these by now, all of those who watch the Open down the years. Great look at the first hole, probably the widest fairway in the history of golf because you've got one and 18 running side by side. As we look at Nicholas. Pretty conservative play. Tiger now after a perfect placement with the iron off the tee. Just a wedge, he can be aggressive. Lovely shot by Woods. So much attention on that final group, of course. There are plenty of other superstars out on the course trying to make a move, and one of those is Rory McIlroy. Solid start, not spectacular, and when you're chasing the sort of caliber of player Rory is, you need a lot of birdies out there, a hope and a prayer as well. But one under through eight holes. He's on the ninth right now. Needs to light it up on the back nine, try and get up as high as he can, post the best score possible. This would help. Eagle opportunity on nine. Drove the green. Ha-ha, yeah. <laughs> Rory, there you go. Greg Norman. Wired stats all the way back in the, the dunes and the bushes at 14. Trying to find the fairway by the name of the Elysian Fields. And he's found these Elysian fields, avoided the beardies down the left-hand side. That looks like it's settled down. Might be an old divot for Norman. We'll have to wait and see. Back at the first, Jack Nicholas is two-putted for par. Tiger for a birdie to get his round underway. Oh, I think he misread that the way he's looking at it. Yes, he did. He said, ah, oh, I went left. I didn't see that coming. Nice little smile, though. That's a pair of bars for Nicholas and Woods to get their final round underway. So they cross the bridge, go over to the par for second. And all of these spectators in the grandstand have now made their way down to that second tee. By the Himalayas, padding green. Let's head over to 11 and find Nick Price. Beautiful tee shot, fine birdie cut. Price moves to minus four. Good front line from uh, Zach Johnson today. Five birdies and four pass. Uh, he's managed to progress to minus eight. With the quality ahead of him, may need to do the same on the back night. Nevertheless, the American going well. Typical Lynx day. A bit of sunlight, a bit of breeze. Here is Johnson to start the back nine. Well, he gets the front nine that everybody wants, and he keeps it going with a great birdie putt. He's moving along well. It's a nice shot from Greg Norman to this position. Still a bit of work to do with his wedges on 14. Great green. 
be such a challenging hole with a difficult pin position. It is Sunday of the Open after all. Demands precision. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Greg Norman holds it for an eagle. Well done, Shark. Sometimes you get what you deserve in this game, sometimes you don't. This tee shot did find the divot. He had to lay up, but he left himself a yardage he was comfortable with. And he has played that one to a tee. What a lovely moment for the two-time champion. Eagle at 14 from Greg. Tiger Woods back in the middle of the second fairway. He and Stevie talking over the wind direction there. I love this green. It's got all kinds of humps and bumps in it. They can hide the flag. You have to be so precise at St. Andrews with your second shots. Yes, there's room to drive the ball, but you better hit your second shots pin high to have good chances at birdies. But that was an aggressive swing with a wedge. Good shot. Getting better. Let's take a little look at the first of the short holes, and it is called short. Looks innocuous enough, but all depends on what they do with the pin position. The really challenging ones up in that back corner of that green. Huge obviously shares a green with the 10th. Good look at John Daly. This is his shot at the eighth. 175 is the yardage today. Look at the wind, hard off the right. Well judged by John. And using the wind there, riding it on the wind. And when it gets strong, it's the right thing to do. What's Spieth going to choose to do? If you hit the hold-up shot, you've got to take a lot more club. Jordan. Jordan, come on, man. And he's held that up into the wind too much. And that, yeah, short and right. A real mistake from Jordan. It is, because that putt's going to be down the breeze as well, so there'll be nothing much easy about that. Wonderful record for uh, such a young man, a very impressive young man as well. Jack's already made his par, he's second of the round. And the turn of Woods for the birdie three. Woods, two good looks to the first two holes. Didn't get it at the first. Can he make birdie at the second? Could have been a great start for Tiger, but it's par par the first two. It's a good start, however, for Woods. You say, yes, he's missed a couple of birdie chances, but he's given himself these chances. And he's still very much in the mix at 12 under par. The Open is where reputations are built and history made as the world's best players battle it out for the title of Champion Golfer of the Year. Behind the scenes, the stage is set by the craftsmen and experts whose skills have always played their part since the origins of the game. Champions, engravers, caddies, and scorers, these craftsmen and experts are the inspiration behind our new hospitality experiences, delivering the perfect setting
to indulge in the finest hospitality at the world's oldest and most prestigious golf major. Origins. Hospitality at the Open. Savi and Nick have reached the fifth, and alongside them down there is Iona Stephen. Yes, we're down here on the par five, fifth hole, 570 yards, and it's Nick Faldo up first, driver in hand. Oh, yes, good swing. Very smooth down the middle of the fairway. Now, it is makeable today for both of these players. Good birdie opportunity, or perhaps better. And he's happy with that, but now it's the Spaniard's turn. Just double checking the wind. Light breeze off the right. The crowd's enjoying themselves as he steps up. Looking very focused. Now, there are bunkers at 258 yards down the right hand side. So left of centre is the preferred line off the tee. No birdies yet for Seve today, so he will be looking to grab one here, at the very least, on the fifth. And yes, no holding back on that one. Fantastic. Both players looking very smooth here, down on the fifth hole. Nicely placed down uh, the fairway, so uh, they can get to work from there and take something out, out of this fifth hole. The leader, Watson, third of the round gone. His approach to seven. Just caught the downslope. Skated on forward, and he'll have his work cut out to get down in two from that. Birdie attempt for Harrington at the 10th. Left to right putt. Uh, yes, you got it, Padraig. Well done. To look at 13. Been positioned over in the front right. Such a massive green. And so many choices around that. I remember we left Spieth over at the par 3 eighth. This was a few moments ago. Not a very good shot to the eighth. Ball got hung up in the wind. About an 80 foot putt here. I believe he just degreened it. This is live, this for par. Back up the hill. Not the eighth hole Spieth was looking for, that's for sure. Second of Watson trundling off the back edge, but near enough the green to use the putter. <laughs> Last 30% of the putt pretty much downhill. And how's that for judgment? Brilliant touch. Let's head over to 10. Letting it all hang out, the big easy, what a move. The swing that everybody always tried to copy. It's done quite well as well. And look at it chasing on and on. Past the 11th tee. Oh my word, what a shot. Now, both players have found good positions off the tee, avoiding those bunkers on the right-hand side. It'll be Seve to play first. Now, this approach shot is made more challenging 
because there's a big swale just short of the green that's blind. He's hit a good strike with his fairway wood, but it seems to be heading left, left half of the green, and it might get caught up in one of the swales down there, but as ever, he's walking after it. Nick Faldo up next, iron in hand. Saw him discussing quite extensively with Fanny Sonnison. Club selection here, very important because the green is 100 yards deep. One of the biggest on the golf course, no question. And it's an iron he's gone with. Another very smooth swing. Right down the heart of the green. Fantastic shot. That will definitely be a strong chance for Eagle for Nick Faldo here on the fifth hole. Yeah, Bowes, as good as he could do downwind there on the par five. You can see the wind is up a little. Daly, his birdie chance on eight. Back into the breeze, gives it a wrap. Bottom of the cup for Daly. Fun favourite, all right. Even in that top. Could be a big change over there. Uh, eight speed struggling. Daly securing the two. And still in with a chance of another claret jug. Nineteen ninety-five was his year. So Spieth, after all the trials and the tribulations, still has three and a half, four feet left for just the one drop shot. Well, this is uh, this would be something to miss this one. Oh, he's four putted the eighth green. Wow, Jordan, you can't get away with that and have a chance to win this great championship. Mm. You can see the frustration there in Jordan's speed. T-shirt really to blame there for speed. He left himself so much to do. And now he's got it all to do over the closing 10 holes. Alone with his thoughts on his way to the ninth tee. Again, very tight at the top. It's anyone's title. The swales to the left of the green with a lob wedge in hand. It's a blind shot, oh, and it looks good. One of the best hands in the game. That is a lovely touch. Hungry for his first birdie here, that's given him about a 10 foot putt that he'll have next. It really was a stunning tee shot on 10. A little bit of ground help as well, but this is what he has left for his eagle. Be a good move as well to get to eight under par. On, Lovely effort. I think everyone around the tenth green was trying to will that one in. As we have a look at McElroy's record, he took to major championship go fairly early on in his career. May not be his week here, but chance of a birdie and a chance that he takes. Savvy now after a marvelous little pitch. He has blind way down below the green. Pitch to here, about 12 feet. Yeah. That's Seve being Seve. Well done, man. Well done. Should be a mere for formality for Els here. Still on this camera angle, be a little longer than it looks for us. Three feet, maybe. Yeah. No dramas. In for birdie. That's a nice move, a handsome move on the final round. Birdie run starting before the St Andrews loop for Else. 
And you never know, the wind picks up on that back nine. And the later starters, as Faldo makes his birdie after two fine shots that find the middle of the fifth. And that birdie takes him alongside Tom Watson, uh, 13 under par. The par 3 eighth, joint leader Watson. Safely on. Now Louis Ostez. Love this man's golf swing. Beautiful tempo, great rhythm, beautiful bounce. He's not gonna like that one. He pulled that on the wind, got to turn it right to left. The wind made it exaggerated right to left. Not the shot he was looking for, for sure. It would be overly harsh to say it's been a stuttering start for Tiger Woods, but it's certainly not been a fast one. And this will take his attention. Difficult par four fourth, ginger beer. Ah, that's the way to start it. Absolutely splits the center. That's the hard bit done. He's done it all, and they say it's a habit, winning golf tournaments, whether it be on his domestic tour or in the majors as well, 15-time major champion but outdone, of course, by his playing partner today in Jack Nicholas. What a career. It surely is, and what a round from Zach Johnson. We saw him reach the turn in at 31, birdie 10. He's got another chance at 12. Unbelievable, Zach Johnson off to the start that everybody wanted. Let's head over and join Henrik Stenson. Second shot here, just off the fairway. Oh, nicely judged. Slow down. Oh, that's one <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> ah, the flagstick was his friend on that one. Let's have a look at the ninth. Such a flat part of the golf course, the 10th coming in the opposite direction. And some players have chosen to take the driver, others have taken these bunkers out of play. No surprise to see Daly on full power. That is left of left as well. Well, he knew it when he hit it too. He can't blame the cameraman for not following that one. That's on another planet. 11th, and uh, McElroy for a two. Hello, Rory. Well done, my man. Look at that run. 
two at nine, two at 11. Jordan Spieth at nine. That is not a driver. Jordan's got to reach in and suck it up now after that four putt at the eighth and a double bogey. He's got to get it going. He's left himself way back. Birdie opportunity for Tom Watson here. Look at the crowds out in force. What a rare treat to see so many golfing greats all together today. Blind second for Tiger up and over the, the mound, over on the left side of four. That hasn't altered him going straight at the flag. See how the wind is turning. We've seen the west wind now just beginning to swing around from the east. As we've said before, a, a typical Lynx day and that will test the very best. Over to 12 in Harrington. Not a long putt, but it could slide to the right. Ah, well done, Padre. Kept the speed up, kept it on line. Well, this is where he's ended up. Big hook off the ninth tee. But he might have just about got a good break there. Relatively clean line. Easy to hit it. Just a fraction heavy, mind. That's just what he does. Could have been worse, though. First look at Lee Trevino on his way into the 14th. Only par five on the back nine. And no great surprise, mastering these conditions, holding the ball up and giving himself the chance of a four. Classy stuff from uh, Trevino. Remember the win at Birkdale with Mr. Lou on the final hole there? And then, of course, the great tussle with Tony Jackson 12 months later at Muirfield. Amazing record from uh, Trevino. So Nicholas has made another par, just plugging along nicely, not doing anything spectacular. And Tiger Woods has a chance to go one better here with a birdie three at four. Wood's not really the start he wanted. He had good looks at it at one and two. Little longer putt here at four. Familiar two strokes he makes. Gets in, gets settled. Gives it a look, pulls the trigger. Same routine every single time. Tiger with his first birdie of the day. Moves up the leaderboard. He surely does. Now shares the lead, uh, 13 under par. Toughest hole of the opening four, and it's the one Woods birdies. Now Spieth looking for the rebound. Double bogey on eight. Just the wrong time for that. Making great progress. Trying to respond the right way. Oh, and he does. Credit where credit is due. We all make mistakes in this game, but it's how you react to them that counts, and it's the perfect reaction for Jordan Spieth. Another chance to come on 10 as well. Have a look at the 12th, the first of a journey back towards the centre of town, Heathery Inn, tea by the Eden Estuary, and some bunkers to avoid. Amazingly, five of them are in the middle of the fairway. There are various ways you can play this, but it's a good opportunity to pick up a shot before the tough par fours. And green that slopes away at the back and also slopes back towards the player at the front. Roy McIlroy has driven it right on the front of the green. This is an eagle putt, a long one, up the tier, breaking right and breaking back left. Not bad, though, from where he came from. Watson at 13 under and joined by Faldo's birdie at five, Tiger Woods birdie at four. Three at 13, three at 12. The 
So Daly and Trouble at the ninth hole, having pulled his tee shot down the left-hand side. It was a reasonable recovery from the path over on that left-hand side by the winds. And remember, he left himself some five or six yards short left of the green. He's putted up to here, and this is for a par four. It's a great save for John Daly. It was a good break missing. The gorse bushes down the left-hand side, being on the path. We've got to take advantage of those opportunities, and John surely has a nice front nine. So we leave him at nine and go to one of the greats, Butch, over at 17. Uh, Peter Thompson, one of the greats of all time. Five-time Open winner. A man I don't think that gets his just due. He's one of the best players the game's ever seen. The dangerous 17th. Rory saw the first putt after driving the green. An easy birdie for him. There's nothing easy about that 12th hole. It might be short. <laughs> it's not simple. <laughs> Wonderful moments, players like these two and the rest in the field have given us down the years. And they've given us a little bit more in this open for the ages. So we zoom back down the fairway at nine, back into a tee that nestles in at the wind bushes, and it's there we find one of the joint leaders, Tom Watts. Drive on the way from Watson. At nine, you have to avoid the little pot bunkers out there. Plenty of room. Smart play came up short of them. They are the tiniest little bunkers. <laughs> you don't want to be in them either. No, and they <laughs> gobble them up, don't they, Butchie, as well? They do gobble up golf balls for fun. Mean. The interesting thing is that 10th fairway is to the right, and there's plenty of room over there if you want to go in that direction. I think those bunkers like they have a magnet for your golf ball. <laughs> oh, perfect drive by Louie. Drove it right on the front of the green. Guess of play. So let them wander up the ninth fairway. We saw the approach of Peter Thompson at uh, the 17th, just short right. Most delightful shot to here. And this to secure the four at the road hill. That wonderful saying, you never lose it. Beautiful applied hole from Peter Thompson. Down here on the fairway of the seventh hole, par four, 371 yards, and famous for the enormous shell bunker, which is just short right of the green. Both players in a great position, and it'll be Faldo to play first. Just checking that wind, quite strong off the right hand side, but he's got a nice full shot in, looks like a pitching wedge in hand. Green slopes to the right, so I imagine he'll be aiming just left of the flag here. Another very smooth swing. Floating beautifully up to the green, yes, pin high left of the flag. That is a great position for Nick Faldo. Looking very calm and controlled. Seve with a more challenging shot here, a little pitch over the hill bunker, not hanging around. We know he's capable of with a wedge in his hand, and yes, that looks very good. Up to the left-hand side of the green, catching a swale, gathering round. Well, Louis certainly happy about his position here on nine, an eagle chance. 
How about that? And those stars behind will hear that roar for sure. It's a big move from Louis. No birdies on the front nine. There's an eagle, though. Shows the need for patience. When players are making birdies around you and he puts together eight pars, but one moment like that can change it all. Back at five, Tiger for a birdie four. Look at the break in that putt. So much break from left to right. Beautifully judged by Woods. Now, Seve, he wasn't impressed with this. I only thought it was a good shot. We all thought it was, but he is Seve, and he has high expectations. This still, though, the birdie chance on seven. A little hop on the way there. Let's wander over to the 16th, where we find Gary Platt. That with a driver. Principal's nose to avoid here. Well, two ways you can play it. All the way down the left side, but that leaves a tougher second. It's absolutely fine. That's in between the rough and the bunkers. Good line for the second shot. Faldo. Nice control of the wedge into seven. This is what he's got left. Tickle down the hill. Just dived across to the left hand side. Good putt. Back at five, Jack for a share of the lead. Slow putt. He's got the pace, he's got the lane, and he's got a share of the lead. Ready for one of these famous final round charges, I think, from uh, Nicholas. Up there alongside Tiger, Nick, and Tom. Lovely Bay of St Andrews. Let's head back to the final group, and Jack has the honour at the sixth. Just over the 400-yard mark. Blind tee shot this one. You drive up and over some, some sand dunes and some winds, but it's quite a generous fairway and relatively flat. Wonderful drive. They call those cameras, please. Thanks very much. What a pairing this is. Two of the greatest players the game's ever seen going head to head. The top of the leaderboard. Well, let's talk about this time. Great drive. Yep. Beauty, Tiger. 
Steve Williams likes it, that's for sure. Perfect shot. Two very fine drives at six, so we'll let them wander down the fairway. Go ahead to player, the second at 16. One of the few players, Ewan, that never made a waggle, just stood there. Just the kick in with the right knee, that hasn't changed down the years. He's done extremely well there, he's got the distance right, that's the important thing. Rather surprised that didn't just trickle back down the slope a little bit and find the flat part of the green. Faldo uh, 13 under, Seve Ballesteros at 12, as they come towards the turn. Let's head down there to Iona once again. We're down here on the par 3 eighth, and it's Seve up first. Mm. Oh, this looks very good, right down the flagstick, yes, he'll be happy. Looks within 10 feet. Good chance of birdie for him. But it's a cracking hole this eighth. One of only two par threes on the old course and the first of six holes that heads back towards the old grey tune of St Andrews. And it's also the point where we can really start to feel the atmosphere building down here. Crowds gathering as we head towards the turn. And it's Nick Faldo now. Again, controlled. Oh, it's looking great, right down the flagstick as well. Anything you can do, and that will work very nicely. Both gonna have good chances of a birdie here. Perfect drive from Woods at the sixth. He's got the putter out for the second shot. You can see the humps and bumps that he has to go over. Interesting play by Tiger here. Something he practiced all week long, putting from the fairway. Look how hard he hits that up the first, over the second one, down, now he'll turn back to the right. Ooh, he's not gonna be happy with that. Penalised for such a good tee shot, uh, all the way across the walkway there. So the approach of a player at 16, and Nick much talked about players building their muscles up uh, and hitting the ball further. This man's been doing it for the best part of 60, 70 years. He certainly has, and he's done more setups than any other golfer to ever play the game, I'd say, but you could probably fit Gary Player in each of Bryson's arms right now. Quite a slight man and had to make the most of his power that he could amass to keep up. So he's outworked everybody and you have to admire what he's done. And it's led to a lot of major championships. One of the true greats of the game. Wonderful effort from a player. Just a little pacey perhaps, but from that distance really not to be criticised. Tiger putts for par. Oh, there you go. Big drive there, didn't take advantage of it. A lovely shot into the par three. Just glided by the edge, the chance on seven. Can he find the bottom of the cup this time? Oh, just needed another roll that have grabbed the piece of that right edge. Time to be patient for Mr. Faldo. It's a solid round so far, a couple of birdies. Could have been at least a couple better though. Over at the 17th, uh, another popular visitor from the United States, a player who's graced the Open Championship down the years, Ben Crenshaw.
and that's never been a problem for him. Lovely moment in front of the gallery at 17 for Crenshaw. Let's head back to that eighth hole and find Seve. He watched the Nick Faldo miss his chance. Seve. No such mistakes for, well, the king of the short game. No one ever better. Hard to say anyone's ever chipped or putted the ball better than Severiano. Head over and find Els. Big drive from Els. Held bunker right in front of him there. That's not in play today. I'm able to send it way over that. Chase it up, try and get it up the bank, which he's done. Now, will it stay on the same level? Green that just falls away at the back. That's a sparkling second from Els. That's a chance of an eagle three. Take a look at where the tee shots ended up on this par 5 14th. You see Els, we just saw his second shot. Rory will be next. He too with the fairway medal. One hand off on the follow through. He didn't like it. And that's why. It's been a happy hunting ground uh, at St Andrews, where McElroy managed to get his tour card on the European tour with a sensational shot into 18. Finished third in that event, and that was the beginning of what's been a, a remarkable story. 13 under, still the mark at the top of the leaderboard. Moving towards the end of the front nine, final day of the Open for the Ages. The lovely sands, uh, St Andrews Bay, Chariots of Fire was filmed down there. One of the most beautiful beaches, but never really synonymous with extremely warm weather. There's Watson enters the back nine. That's a stunner. Squeaking it onto the front of the green. Pretty couples at 18. Talk about rhythm. How about this guy's swing? Oh, that's a lovely shot. Oh, oh it's better than lovely. It's perfect. <laughs> well done, Freddie, my man. A lovely way to finish your championship. McElroy is third from one of the tees over on the right-hand side of 15. Not bad. Would have expected to get that a little closer, but it's OK. Tee shot on 13 for Spieth. Looks like he's using the right side here. Just about... And almost on the fairway, as good as on it anyway. Miss the coffins is the key on 13. Daily out with the iron. Sends it down though. Perfect position. Right up under that little mound there. A wonderful eagle opportunity here for Ernie Els on 14. Jostling for position, all of these top players now. All capable, stringing together a few birdies to step out from the crowd. Who's taking the second shot at 10? Oh, is it going to stay there? I don't think the wind's going to let it. Oh, that's too bad. After the pitch from the right side of 14 for the birdie, McElroy. And, well, maybe the pitch wasn't 10 out of 10, but nothing much wrong with it, but it's another birdie. Maybe a, a little too late. He's still got four holes left, you never know. That's some run from the turn, some run from the ninth. 
one under birdies from nine through to 14. Exceptional. Saw the hammered tee shot from Tom Watson finding the front edge of this 10th hole. It's given him the opportunity for an eagle. An outside look, you'd have to say. Let's go to 18. Jose Maria Othabo, one of my favorite human beings on the planet. Nobody loves golf more than this guy. And this is how you end an open championship. Hello. Tell him, Ali. Tell him. <laughs> See just how strong that wind is. You saw the top of the flag, which is all that Delhi would see into 13. And he's done extremely well. These are shots that can get away from you the way things are right now. Good control from John Daly. So the ball not quite clinging on for Louis. Edging off the surface. Two pots from here is no gimme. Oof. Very nearly did it in one. Incredible touch from the South African. Jordan Spieth, 13. This shot's not that difficult. It's back into the wind. He can be aggressive with it. He can carry this all the way to the flag and it'll stop. Hits on the down slope, checks some spin. Oh, grabs a lot of the hole. Well done. Yes, that's one way of stopping it. Good touch from uh, Jordan Speed. Well, it's been an interesting final round so far, but we're none the wiser as who's going to have the claret jug at the end of it all, because that's how tight it is at the top of the leaderboard. Fabulous stuff. This is, this is why we play. This is it. All the greatest of the game that have ever played the game have come after this joke. It means you're holding history. Definitely the most special one. You know, this is, uh, this is it. It's magnificent. So that's what this is all about. Lovely sound, uh, ball and turf. Woods on his way to the par three eighth. <laughs> Never left the target. Quarter of a club too much, I guess, if you've been critical. Aldo and Ballesteros locked together following this one today. Iona, she's certainly enjoyed the front line, that's for sure. Now, the atmosphere is getting very exciting down here on the 10th tee. Huge crowds starting to build, and it's Seve on the tee with the driver. Oh, he's left nothing back there. It is a drivable par four. But of course, the Kruger bunker down the right hand side's got to be avoided, and he's done it. Looks to be bounding towards the green. Perhaps just short of it, but it's a good position. <laughs> and it'll be Nick Faldo up next, taking a lot of consideration with Fanny Sunnison. She is a very, very good companion to have out here on the old course. And he's got the driver, could be drivable for Nick Faldo. 
He's teed the ball up nice and high. Oh, not one of his best swings of the day. Fell off it a little at the end and he's not very happy about that. But I tell you what, it doesn't look to be in any trouble. Still a straight ball flight. No bunkers, both on the fairway and they'll both be hunting down a birdie here on the 10th hole. Yeah, if only all of our bad shots look like that. Now we'll leave superstar duo into another titan in Greg Norman. 16th hold, avoid the principal's nose bunkers, Dick and Syme as well. Keep it on the grass, and all will be well. Greg's managed that. Wind just off that left-hand side, you see the flag flapping there. Oh, pinpoint from Norman. Now we're hearing over at the 12th hole uh, Tom Watson has found some trouble and evidence of that, Butch. Yeah, he's hit a shot over here to the left. He was trying to drive the green. He's uh, finally found the ball, I believe. He's going to take an unplayable lie. He can, he's got several options. He can take two clubs lengths either side, no nearer the hole. He can go back as far as he wants with the hole and the ball on a straight line, or he could go back to the tee. He looks like he's taking the two club length drop. So this will be his third shot. He's done very well from that. At least he's found the right level. So Watson down the left, is Hazen in a, a much better position, just in the throat of the green. And he's got a choice here, as you can see, but with that amount of loft, he's trying to throw this all the way up onto the flat and get some check on the second bounce. Just like you said, you and he just had so much spin on it, it didn't quite release down there. Well, this is how it sits. Both of them at 13 under par. Jack and Tiger. Constant debate. Who is greater? Hard to separate them. The thing that matters is the major championship wins, and Jack has the edge in that. Tiger looking to climb that little bit closer today. Birdie putt on eight. It was a nice line, needed a bit more pace. A fine tee shot from his playing partner, Nicholas. He's got the opportunity to edge in front. Tiger looks like he's going to go ahead and finish up, which he's quite entitled to do. It's been cagey between these two today, Butchie. It looks like they're weighing each other up. Oh, it's, it's, you're, you're watching two of the greatest heavyweights of all time go at it, punch for punch. Woods had a beautiful shot here. It was right over the top of the flag. So just a three for Tiger Woods. Beautiful shot he played in there. Familiar crouch. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there you go, Jack. His first birdie of the round at five, Drew, alongside Watson. He's second at eight, does exactly the same. No mistakes today. Three at the ninth will see him out in uh, 33. We'll head forward to Norman. This is the 16th. Greg Norman played a beautiful second shot in here. That wind was just whipping from his left to right. The wind that a right-handed golfer dreads. He set it out there to the left, drew the ball back into the wind. Now has a great chance for a birdie. There you go, Greg. Well done, my man. 
Now we're down here by the right hand side of the 10th green. Of course, this is a double green shared with the 8th. Seve in one of the swales after hitting a good tee shot and he's got the putter in hand, which is unusual. We know he loves that little bump and run shot, but he'll do very well to get up and down from here. And the ball sets off. Big break from right to left. Nick DePaul, the caddy, steps away. Not one of his best. Still left around 12 foot now for his birdie putt. But Seve walking onto the green. He'll have to mark that. Still a good chance of birdie for him here on the 10th. Seve deciding to mark that gives us the chance to go to 18 and the second of Trevino. <laughs> Master shot maker. And a beautiful approach. Six and a half feet left down the slope to sign off his championship with the three. They liked it, he liked it. And it's been a good week for Lee Trevino. Let's take a little look at 15, Cartgate in. And again, you've got to navigate your way into the little neck there. It does really pinch in as well. Once you've done that, it is a good birdie opportunity. There's not many give me holes on the way into the clubhouse here. But 15 off a good tee shot could be one of them. Bunker on the left to be avoided. Rory from that right rough. Easy to twist this to the left hand side. Oh, anything but. Beautifully controlled. Putting together some final flourish as McElroy, but one suspects he's found his form just a little too late. Out to ten by Steros. This for Brady Fallow's already made his par. Had a really difficult first putt, even though he drove the green, had to come up the slope. Huge break from right to left. Oh, Seve. You don't see that happen very often. Three putts from Seve Ballesteros. Difficult to take your eyes off this. Two shots separating the top seven players, and Spieth still has some time. Still one third of the round remaining for him. Some big names also on page two, Butch. One of the most amazing leaderboards I think you could ever see in golf. We're getting a look at it today. Greatest players of all time, the Open for the Ages. Fantastic stuff. Greatest players of all time, up against the most historic and greatest of golf courses. The old course St. Andrews and a pivotal hole, road. The direction of this championship so often decided right here. Champions are made, hopes and dreams can be crushed. What's the story for Harrington? It's not going to be a win for him here, but he could sell that for a pretty penny come the end of the day. He certainly could. To more than half a dozen players, I think, the way things are going right now. And one of these is Rory McElroy with the charge he's made after that lovely two at the ninth. He's found a flurry of birdies, and he has another chance here at the 15th. Good look at it, too. Can be aggressive up the hill. Had a boy, Rory. Rory going in the right direction, not so far. Tom Watson back at the 12th. Remember, in the bushes, this is for a par. Quick walk there, you, and he knew he mishit it. First major win for Watson came at Kurnusti. Battle with Australia's Jack Newton, which 72 holes wasn't enough to decide it. And then, of course, the, the run of majors from Watson five times Open champion.
All at different golf courses as well, you, and that's pretty special, isn't it? Yes, many of them are in Scotland, but I don't think anyone will forget the second to the 72nd at Birkdale in winning there. First thousand. Just a bit too much check on the pitch at 12. Chance to take a step closer. Just enough pace to make it into the front of the hole. And there you go, his first birdie of the day, but it's a birdie that moves him to three under for the round. He's hanging in there. Over at 18, the great Lee Trevino finishing off for a birdie putt. That our boy Lee. Not only one of the greatest players of all time, a great showman. Really was a beautiful shot into 17. Smart, well executed, and rewarded with this birdie chance. Nick, any ball that finds the green at 17 is a wonderful shot. <laughs> it really is. The key here, Butch, is to nonchalantly walk up to the hole like you're disappointed with the par four. <laughs> yeah, right. Never had that option. No, and the trouble is it hasn't happened to too many either. <laughs> But it has happened to Harrington, a classy second shot then to good putts from long range. So he's as he was. But not so at the top of the leaderboard. A titanic battle going on uh, at the home of golf. They're into the back nine. Oh, but. And, of course, a back nine that can tell so many tales. Here's a look at 15. 15th hole flyover. 455 yards, you must avoid that bunker right there. They should hit it past that today. You can see all the different slopes on these greens. It's what makes St. Andrews so difficult, especially when the wind blows. It's so hard to control your shots into the green. Nothing much between uh, Delhi and Spieth, just the one shot there. Here is Daly once again sticking with the iron. T shot at 15. Power, wonderful asset that you can pull iron out on these par fours. 455. Driving iron down there. Crushed. Spieth will not be hitting an iron, that's for sure. He's going with the driver. Well done. Have to find these fairways here. Yes, they're wide, but there's those pot bunkers everywhere. Norman has found 17. Just drilling that one through the breeze, holding it up against it. And it's just got enough pace to stop falling back into road bunker. Another classy approach from Gregory John Norman. Such a cool shot. Such creativity. And seeing the best of the game. Have to deliver that around the old course is a little bit special. Pricey. What can he do? The hole further back on 16. Chance to come for Nick. All dry by the Eden estuary. And Nicholas now assumes a one-shot lead. The Open is where reputations are built and history made as the world's best players battle it out for the title of champion golfer of the year. Behind the scenes, the stage is set by the craftsmen and experts whose skills have always played their part since the origins of the game. Champions, engravers, caddies, 
and scorers. These craftsmen and experts are the inspiration behind our new hospitality experiences, delivering the perfect setting to indulge in the finest hospitality at the world's oldest and most prestigious golf major. Origins, hospitality at the open. Fairly dry out there by the Eden Estuary. Down there is the 11th green, and uh, back on the tee, we find Severiano Ballesteros. Got to be careful here. There's Hill Bunker on the left, Strath Bunker is just shy of the flag today. What a bit of sand coming up with that. I'm not sure he got that, Sevi. Turf and ball together, I think. And it's short. This is where it all starts to happen now, well into the back nine. Chance for Faldo perhaps to make a move. And down there alongside him is Iona, who's been pretty impressed with the way Faldo's played over these first ten holes. Faldo, he's been so in control all day. Looking very calm as he steps in to take a shot. Controlled swing, heading towards the heart of the green. And it looks good. Quite hard to see from where I'm standing, but he is frustrated. Hands the club back to Fanny Sunnison and walks on. Trying to keep the head, but they are really going at it, hammer and tongs, these two. Head at 17, we saw the marvellous low chasing second shot of Greg Norman at 17, this for birdie. Boy, and you make a birdie at 17, you've lapped the field. Did he hit it? Did he hit it? No, he didn't. Yeah, you're upset you don't make three, but you leave 17 with a four, you gotta feel good about it. Two major championships for Greg Norman, it's the same story for John Daly, 95 for the Open, and that PGA Championship at Crooked Stick. He really does let it all hang out, and this really does tap into his ability to be creative, to make golf an art form. With just a nine off the tee for Daly, trying to squeeze one down with his ball flight, chase it up that green. That wind's freshening out there. Been like that all day. Nick, some sun coming through and wind blowing the clouds away. A lovely exhibition of a punch shot from Daly and also a few moments ago at 16 from Nick Price, which has left him some 18 feet away from early three. Zimbabwean born. Brother Tim represented. Zimbabwe and the Alfred Dunhill Cup here down the years. Again, a putting stroke that really hasn't changed very much down the years. Hands quite close together, narrow stance. Just like Norman at 17, price a little shy at 16. Jordan Spieth back at 15. Second shot on the perfect drive. Be the right club. Gives it the twirl of the club and says be right, so he likes it. Right over the top of the flag. Well done, Jordan. We're gonna head back to 11. Not such a good second for Sevi. This for part. back nine on Sunday. That's when the air is creeping for everybody, even the genius. And Sevier backwards move, unfortunately. Long way away for Daly. Well, it's just as well the hole got in the way there, otherwise that was seven, eight, nine feet by. 
So maybe a good break for John Daly. Back at the 11th, Nick Faldo. Down the hill, breaking left to right, and look at the speed. Well judged, Nick. It was indeed. That's what Spieth will be looking to do here. Tickle one in, just trickle it over that front edge of the cup. Move to 12 under par. Nearly. Hard to not force the issue with the quality that's in front of him. So 11 under par, and Spieth trailing the leader, Jack Nicholas, after that beautiful birdie at the eighth. Up in 34 today. And chasing him, Tom Watson, despite the mistake at 12. Oosthuizen has moved nicely up there, and John Daly still not out of it. One shot separates the top five. So the final group about to enter the back nine as we have a look at page two there. Good 69s from Lee Trevino and Jose Maria Olathabel. Best score of the day so far. Let's take a look at 10. Named Bobby Jones, 386 yards. We've seen plenty of players popping it on the green here. That bunker at 298 to reach, you have to avoid. Because even though it's only a flick of the wrist to reach that flag, that lip is fairly high. And you may well be coming out sideways, even if you can get at it. The players are well aware of this. It's the challenge of St Andrews. You have this wonderful carrot dangling for you, but if you make a mistake, it might take one, two, or even more, Butch. <laughs> you said something about the bunkers. You don't want to be in any of these bunkers, I can tell you that. They are real hazards, as a bunker should be. Woods uh, putting his mark on his new ball. As he makes his practice swings here at 10, he can get it to the green. And we know he'll be trying. Down the right side, avoids the bunker. Uh, what a wonderful thing. Power and accuracy. I wouldn't know anything about it. <laughs> what a wonderful description. Savvy and Faldo, let's have a look and see what they've got up to here, trying to avoid these five fairway bunkers. The first two are not really in play. And first to play the approach, the Englishman. It's a good one. Knew where the wind was, played it back into the wind, held it, spun the ball back towards the flag. He'll have a good chance for a birdie and a good chance to get up there with Nicholas. Savvy from the right-hand side of uh, the gallery. Make their way for home. Holes 12 all the way through to 17. Go pretty much in the same direction. Back towards the city. Similar type of shot for uh, Ballesteros. Brilliant, quite brilliant, and it's come at just the right time. Fabulous shot from the Spaniard. A little glance across at Faldo, I think. Just letting him know who's boss. Take a look at the 13th. You see where Watson and Ustazen have driven the ball. They avoided those three pot bunkers, and believe me, you better avoid them. Flowing swing of Tom Watson. Wonderful shot, Tom. 
Yes, despite that mistake, uh, 12, you do get the feeling he's maybe not quite finished with this. Nicholas into the back nine alongside Tiger. Long birdie effort. Uh, the shortish power four. Didn't need much more. Nice shake of the head from uh, Jack. He's been here so many times. He, he knows what to do. He knows the feelings. Seeing his name out there in front. It's very familiar to him. Tiger's uh, drive went through the green, came back to here. This is a birdie putt. Really hasn't got anything going today. It's been a pretty innocuous round for Tiger. Did he hit it? No, you bet he did. You bet he did. Dead straight putt went dead straight in the middle. Change at the top of the leaderboard. Tiger Woods moves alongside Jack Nicklaus. Both of these players are at 14 under par. Game of patience, do you feel, for Tiger today? It really is. He showed it, too. Uh, you and he knows he's playing beautiful. He's swinging as good as he's ever swung in his life. And you know he's got a lot of confidence. It was a nice wedge shot in for Faldo, trying to keep pace. It's not a nice feeling, is it, trailing? The two greatest to ever play the game. I mean, you'd pick other people, wouldn't you, if you had a choice? He's doing his best out there to hang tough over to Watson. To repair the damage uh, of the five at the last. He's hit this one OK. And he's got the line. It's what the great players do. The wonderful ability to forget and focus on what's ahead. Brilliant three from Watson. So a fabulous second shot by Seve. Needs to take advantage of it. This for a birdie. Trying to get him to 13 under. Oh, boy, you don't see that very often. Seve. Through the light clouds. Looks like the surface of the moon late on in the day, this tough. And the final hole of an open championship for Arno Palmer. Popularised the modern game. As he spanks one down the middle of the fairway over Granny Clark's wind and bounding its way up there towards the green. Back-to-back -back victories in the Open in uh, 61 and uh, 62. And all the great players uh, have made this journey. Cameras focused on Arno Palmer. And he'll climb onto that Swilkin Bridge and thank the fans and the city for their support over the years. And maybe uh, one or two tears as well. You know, the beauty of Arnold Palmer, Ewan, is he's the one that put the Open on the map for the American players when he started coming over here. He said, if you're going to be a great champion, you've got to be able to win all the major championships all over the world. And he was some kind of great champion. As he says these thanks on the Swilton Bridge, I think, you're right, we thank him for breathing life into the Open Championship uh, and making it the greatest championship uh, in the game today. Seven majors in seven years, Arnold says goodbye to the Open Championship. Palmer made his debut at the Open Championship in St Andrews in 1960. Palmer played what he himself said were the four best rounds of his career, only to narrowly lose out to Kel Nagel by a single shot.
But the American came back stronger, going on to win two consecutive Opens in 61 and 62 at Royal Birkdale and Royal Troon, respectively. His success and swashbuckling style helped boost the game and popularise the Open globally once more. All these years on, and that's the way it should have finished. Palmer, his last shot in the Open Championship. Wonderful golfer, and truly outstanding sportsman. He really was the one that made the Americans realize they had to come over here and play. You know, the argument was there wasn't a lot of money, but Arnold knew what a great championship it was. As Ewan said, the best in golf. He got them all coming. Got a dry eye in the house. Three players now are tight and at 14 under par. It's Woods, Nicholas, and Watson. Two to go for Rory McIlroy, his approach to 17. We said earlier you find the 17th green, you got to be happy. How about this shot by Rory McIlroy? Without a doubt, the best shot of the day at the difficult 17th. He knocks that in. It's going to be an amazing nine holes from the ninth tee. All placements of McElroy we've seen. Now the turn of else. The left side of the fairway, so slightly awkward for Ernie. Bring it in with some elevation like Rory did would be key if he can. Soft lander. Oh, it's beautiful. Anything you can do. <laughs> Perfection from both players. A reception to match the quality of the shots as well. Tremendous stuff. So Pats for birdies coming up there. We saw Arnold Palmer all out just a few moments ago. Let's hear what he has to say after his final open. How do you react when people say, as they do, that this great championship is what it is today because of Arnold Palmer? Well, I, if, as I say, if I have contributed to that, uh, I'm very happy for it. It is a great championship. I always felt that, uh, and that was the reason I came the first time. Tell us about your feelings about St Andrews. Well, uh, I suppose the, the first time I played St. Andrews, uh, I'm glad that I had the presence of mind not to say what I thought, uh, <laughs> because it was, uh, I had some opinions that were uh, probably not great. <laughs> but the more I've played this golf course and the more I've learned about this golf course over the years, uh, the more I've appreciated it and enjoyed it. Uh, and. Uh, Certainly, uh, I suppose you, you know, 
just never ending surprises out there. Uh, it doesn't really matter how well you know the golf course. Uh, if you can hit it in the right spots, generally, uh, you'll be all right. But there's always that uh, occasional bounce that you're not looking for that uh, catches you. Let's go back after the play. We've got Tiger Woods on the 12th tee. Look at those galleries. Tens of thousands of people out there. Tiger with a driver. Stand very still, please. Hey, hang on, mate. We're ready to go, yeah? <laughs> All right, the Tiger's here, Tiger. Best drivers of the golf ball ever, Tiger Woods. And here's evidence, drove it right on the green. Still moving. Down where Sebi was. Stand still, please. Let's head down to Iona once again. 614 yard par five. Seve. And there's no holding back. Players will aim for the Elysian fields, which are down the left hand side. And it seems as though Seve stayed out of trouble, likes it, walking down, crowd loving it too. We're all loving it. Um, this group. There's very different ways of playing the game, both getting the job done. John Daly at minus 12, Jordan Spieth at minus 11. Now is the time, though, to try and finish strongly. They are running out of time. On 16, at least a couple of birdies you'd think John will need. Make his presence felt. It's an aggressive play, challenging the bunkers. And worth the risk. He challenged everything, the right side OB, the bunkers, he just drove it perfectly. Jordan Spieth, ooh, he's looking at it anxiously, it's down the left side. You're okay. Tee shot of Nicholas at 12 down the right side. So he's opened up the green for the second. Try and find the right level. Well, oh, he's done rather better than that. What a brilliant approach from Nicholas. He's had so many down the years. When you look at that, it looks like a novel, doesn't it? All these major victories. 18 times the champion. The third match is the second, uh, 17 of else. It's a rare birdie three there. Second shot right out of the top draw. Tiger Woods eagle putt here from back of the green down, actually where you saw Seve was a little while ago. He's got to come up over a hump then the ball will work back from right to left. There's the hump, there's the break. Beautifully judged by the pace. Beautiful putt by Woods. It's not gonna be Rory's week, but it can still be a cracking finish. Couldn't match the birdie of Ernie's. Such a shame, because it was a stunning approach shot into 17, as good as they come. Four's never a bad score, but there's ever a time to be disappointed. It's now for Rory on that hole. Shame. Lovely pitch from uh, Jack, a putt for a birdie. Yeah. Takes him to 15 under, tied with Tiger. 
That's a 15, uh, Lou Watson. Good angle to watch the putt. There's the late swing. And, well, maybe dead weight, he might have had it. And it's a fine effort from so far away. This is John Daly at 16. He's played that way out to the right, thinking the wind would help it, and he shoved it, got caught up in that swale there. Brody Chance. It's going to be a four. Not to be sniffed at on that hole. Head to 16. Jordan Spieth putting for birdie. He's actually uh, recovered quite well from that four putt at eight. And there's a good reason why. I don't boy, Jordan. He lets you know how important that putt was to him. Fans love it. Check out this reaction. There you go, Jordan. Well, we've seen this guy make a lot of long putts in his career. Man. Daly coming up short, having pitched his approach into the bank, putted up to here. And at best, that's going to be three putts for John Daly. He was unlucky with the approach. A yard short or a yard further on, he would have found the correct level, but it just died into the face of that bank and took all the sting out of it. That's the opening in a nutshell, and it's the old course, isn't it, in a nutshell as well. It took on the challenge with the tee shot, hit the driver, forced the issue, a flick of the wrists into the green, a slight error, a bit of bad luck at rolling down the bank. Next minute, he's got this for bogey. His chances may be gone, but others still have an opportunity. It's a remarkable first page of the leaderboard. Every single one of these players know what it's like to hold a claret jug. Nothing to separate Nicholas and Woods, but you've still got the experience of Watson there with three holes to play. So let's get down and join Iono once again, who's caught up with the three-time champion, Severiano Ballesteros. Sevi with the fairway wooden hand, playing into the wind, and he's hit it very well indeed, chasing after it. This is the best of Sevi. He's looking strong, controlled. Now, it will be short of the green, Quite hard to see from where I'm standing, but it looked good. And he's off down the fairway after it. It's hard to keep up with him. Yeah. Now, Nick Faldo and Funny Sonnison have really taken their time to discuss this shot. A bit of strategy coming in, and I, I thought I overheard Fanny saying, let's stick to the plan. It seems like he's aiming towards the fifth fairway down the left-hand side, which is quite a smart play. It should leave him with a short iron in for his third, but he's setting up, long iron in hand, wind slightly off the left. And it's a good swing. He likes it. Looking very relaxed, I must say. Gives the club back to Fanny and off they go. Sticking to their plan. Very much in the zone. Well, they are marching towards the old grey tune. And that is where we find Zach Johnson, 2015 champion golfer of the year, wrapping up his round. Birdie chance.
What a way to finish. Further afield, Nicholas. T shot uh, 13, just trying to avoid the coffins. Deciding to go left of them, try and take the, all of them out of play, which you can do. He's placed that rather nicely there. It's a long way back, but the angle's pretty good. One of the greatest sights in golf is playing this hole, whether you're in an open championship or you're just there for a leisurely round. It's just a fantastic place to be. It's like you're driving right down Main Street. RNA building there in the background. Absolutely one of the great closing holes of all time. 332 to the front. Tom Morris was made the custodian of the links in 1864, and it was he who designed 18 and 1, and in these two centuries, they've never changed. McElroy trying to find the budding surface. Not going to get there, but he's going to get close. Perfect drive. What a round he's got going. Well, Seve with a pitch in here. Not easy, but will help him to control the ball to this tight pin. And he's done just that. Pin high left, fantastic. Good chance for birdie here for Seve. Now Faldo coming in from the left-hand side. Wind slightly from left to right. And the crowd settle, important moment. Oh, what a lovely swing that was. Smooth, controlled, ball flying into the air. And it lands softly on the green. Too close to the pin, it looked a wee bit left. Maybe hung on to it a little bit, but that's what's happening. The nerves starting to build here now. Can really feel the tension coming. And I've got to say, not a lot of chat between these two players out here. Fiercely competitive. The nerves definitely are building, Iona. But if two men in this entire field are well equipped to deal with them, it's these two in this final group. Tiger in charge on the fairway on 13. What a golf swing. Fraction heavy for distance. It would have looked great for line from where he was. Ahead at 16, Watson, perfect drive. Tom, one off the lead at the moment, needs a birdie. Oh, and he's gonna have a good putt at it. It's been some round of golf for Rory McIlroy, that's for sure. Acquaintance himself with this golf club in the early part of his career. The golf courses, the half dozen that are here. And he's put together an amazing run of figures over the last nine holes. Can he finish with something spectacular? Pally of Sin now to play. Quality shot. It's a bit closer than the one he had at the last hole. It's for a birdie. The question is, should he knock it in? Will that be enough? Jack with a chance to get to 16 under here at 13 and take the lead all on his own. Familiar crouch. On its way. Judge the pace, not the line. It's OK, tap in par, he stays at 15, tied with Woods. Yes, it's a dangerous hole out of the way. Drive over to the left, left him a longer second than he would have wanted. And he remains there at 15 under, alongside Tiger Woods is playing partner. Watson now doing the chasing. And for the likes of Spieth, Faldo and Ostas maybe beginning to run out of holes.
Only else winding up at uh, 18. That's what he has left for his second. Drive right down the throat of the flag. And again, the two ways. Either bump it into the bank at the right, let it swing from right to left, or take it all the way through the air, which it looks likely Nels has made that decision. Thoughts maybe of what might have been. Back at 17, Delhi on the way. Is that all right? That's left. I think his ball's going a little left here. He's better watch out for the. Oh. Yes, uh, that's what he better watch out for. That is what makes the 17th hole so, so difficult. And he's about to find out how the heck do I get out of here? I don't know, Butch. I think the hotel you hit over in the road adds to the difficulty, too. <laughs> That's all to come for Tom Watson. He's back on 16 with a birdie chance, and his race is not run here. He's played some golf today. Just off the pace at the moment, but there is still time. Especially when you've been there before, you have that belief, you have the knowledge of what's required. A splendid day comes to an end for Rory McIlroy. A quiet start to the week in many ways, but he certainly came alive on that back nine. Look at the figures from the ninth. Eight under for the last ten holes, and McIlroy posts 12 under in the Clem House. Faldo at 14 for birdie. Long putt. Down a little bit of slope. Oh, it was a good try. Good try. So no joy at 14 for Faldo. Safety first, really, with the third shot. But no change. He remains a 13 under par. We'll go ahead to Spieth. Again, ultra safe uh, 17 with a, a push over to the right side. And that leaves him a fairly straightforward third shot. Question is, do you fly it up on the top? Or do you run it? With Spieth's skill set, I'd imagine he'll be flicking this one onto the top shelf. He won't try and bump and run it up the bank. Goes the aerial route. Oh, beautiful strike. Put the brakes on at just the right time. Back at 14, we see Seve, birdie putt. He needs to make this, running out of holes. There you go, Seve. All happened a few moments ago. Anastas managing the birdie at 14, so he gets to within two shots, but Woods and Nicholas in that final group, and they're still very much in control. Ballesteros Boyd by his latest birdie. Moves him up alongside Nick Faldo and Lou Eustaz in the 13 under. Tiger and Jack lead the way. I'll tell you what, you'll never see a leaderboard like this in golf. It's the most spectacular thing that I think I've ever seen. Just look at the names.
Who's Tazen on 17T? Exciting drive. Take it over the old railroad shed. As close to the hotel as you can get it. Not bad. Although it's tough coming in from the left on 17. Watson so close to a birdie uh, at 16. And in his heart of hearts, he'll know he needs two birdies. Well, concern over the tee shot as well, there should be. It's a long way right, but it's absolutely fine. It made the carry. Jack on 14. Long par five. Took the safe route down the left, took the out of bounds to the right out of play. He knew what he was doing. Well, that's down by the left hand side of the fifth uh, as you play it. It's going to be a blind second. It's quite a steep bank. May have to get that second shot up quickly. Tiger Woods is driving at 14. He's taking the aggressive route down the right side. Great work. And I'm telling you, that's aggressive with that OB right there. Perfect position. The high right shoulder is never a good look on 14. <laughs> you got that right. And this could be classed as not too good a look either. Let's face wide open and hit it as hard as you can. This could be classed as no chance. How about that? How about that, John Daly? Couldn't even think about shooting towards the flag. Well done. May have hurt his hand hitting into the bank there. Down here on the 15th hole, the par four. Second shot for Faldo. And he's coming in again from the left-hand side. Looks to have an eight iron in his hand. What a lovely shot this looks in the sky. And yes, it is landing softly on the green, rolling up to the pin. Yes, crowd going wild down here. We can really feel it building. Of course, we've got Jack and Tiger coming behind. Oh, the atmosphere, guys, it's really heating up out here. Thanks, Iona. This is a second look of Daly's shot here at 17. You can see the left hand hit the, the bank there of the sodded area. Now, this is his par putt. This would be some par if he makes this. Probably the best five he's ever made. That was screaming seven or eight up against that lip. Once you're in there, you're in for a while. You could pass more than one birthday in that bunker, Butch. Yes, you could. Lovely pitch from uh, Spieth. Wasn't easy coming out of the first cut. He wasn't sure how much spin he'd get on the ball. But he's given himself the opportunity to get out of here with a four after what was quite a loose second shot. It's amazing how the shot slipped by over the last few holes. We've seen it from Daly there, we've seen it from Spieth. And their chances of taking this championship have gone. So a drop shot for Jordan. Crenshaw said the reason the road hole at St Andrews is the most difficult par four in the world is that it was designed as a par six. It's not going to be as many as that for John Daly. In fact, it's going to be a very respectable five considering his position in the road hole bunker. But still, a couple of drop shots at just the wrong time. 
15th green. Seve already in for par and Nick Faldo getting ready to take his birdie putt. They've really taken their time over this one. Fanny Sonnison stepping away now as Nick Faldo gets into the zone. It's definitely left to right and slightly downhill. So it's a tickly one. Good stroke, right in the centre of the cup. How about that? Fist pump from Nick Faldo, crowd going wild. And that was a crucial moment, a birdie here for Nick Faldo on the 15th. So that begins to change things. Faldo didn't make the birdie at the last, follows it with a birdie at the next, and moves up the leaderboard to 14 under to join Watson. Will it be Tiger or Jack, or are we in for a surprise? This is, this is why we play. This is it. All the greatest of the game that have ever played the game have come after this job. It means you're holding history. Definitely the most special one. You know, this is, uh, this is it. It's magnificent. So that's what this is all about. Watson a bit worried about his tee shot at 17. He's now got the perfect angle in here. Oh, no, 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 no. That's going to be interesting. Certainly not what Louis would have wanted to watch right before he has a go at his. And at his angle, Nick, he's shooting right at that wall. It's a hard fairway to find. You think you're down the middle. You're usually in the left rough. You can go so far right off that tee. So a good light. Oh, down the left side. Well, it's better than Watson's, but not by a lot. No, the devil in the deep blues say that, I think, for these two. Watson has got some type of backswing. All depends on the life for Oosthuizen. And, of course, no room for error. It must somehow fashion fours from that. Fourteenth hole. Look at where Jack Nicholas has hit his drive to. Way to the left, as we talked about before. Ewan was right, he's in the other fairway. Tiger down the right center in perfect position. Jack did what he had to do. He avoided all the bunkers. It's never been his favorite hole, this. He took 10 in an earlier championship here after a tussle with Hell Bunker. So it just shows you it happens to even the greats. But he is in good position there for his third. Let's see what Woods can do. Woods is in perfect position here for that fairway metal three wood of his. Hold up, camera people. Thank you. Stevie Williams 
policing the cameras in the gallery, as he always does. Tiger plays in pictures. He likes to stand behind the ball. He likes to visualize the shot before he hits it, and then he just gets up and tries to recreate it. Let's see what he can recreate here. I got there. Boy, oh boy, that was pretty. It's <laughs> all he had. Very nearly squeaking up onto the green. Good position, though. Deserves to have the advantage after the aggression with the tee shot. Jack was a long way left. A little bit lucky, you'd have to say, to miss the thick rough where he was. 18th and Spieth with the driver. Clubhouse clock, the elders said. Oh, they hit the ball so far. A lot of them go right of that. This is the other way. And this needs to settle down. Well, they almost missed the second widest fairway in the course because the one right next to it that he's on, the first was the widest. <laughs> Also down the left-hand side for Daly. Long arm chasing up that. And not much between the two. Similar second shots for them. Aldo at 16. Sticking to his game plan, just takes the iron down there. Long way back, though, for Faldo. Sure is. I have to pull a head cover off for the second shot, Bodge. Possibly. I'll leave these two shots at 17 to you, Nick. Are you suggesting that I've been <laughs> in these positions before? <laughs> no, I'd like you to describe the pain. This is horrid. Playing it way back in the stand so he can pick it up nice and steep. Gets a little bit more room for that backswing. He's going to try and stab it. Good as he can across it, scuttle it across the road, and then it's all about the luck on that bank. One wrong hop, it's coming back to his feet. Oh, he judged it perfectly. A little bit of a cushion as well from the road hole bunker. And all things considered, spectacular from Watson. I would agree with that, Nick. That's about the only shot he had as we look at uh, Nicholas. This is over at 14. We saw he came from the fifth fairway to here. Hands forward, weight forward. Play a little punchy runner in there. Oh, what a wonderful shot. One of the beauties of Lynx golf, watching these great players play these shots they're not accustomed to playing. That's what Woods faces. Handheld cameras give you a, a wonderful idea of what the player faces. See how steep that bank is. First 10 feet, it's downhill, then into the bank. Up she comes. So hard to judge the speed. Just made a magnificent job of that. Had a look in on the way by. He thought he might have made it there, Ewan, with that body language. Oh, damage limitation for Louis. He's going to try and swing it around as much as he can using the swale. There's a little bit of turn that way. Not running the risk. We'll leave you, Nick, uh, 17. Head over to 16 once again, where Faldo's down the middle of the fairway, but Seve's taking the safer route over on the left. A little bit down breeze off his right shoulder. Given his position, he needs them just a little closer than that. But he's got the distance right. It is a putt for a birdie. Let's see what Faldo can do from what is the ideal position. Lovely sound of bold uh, puff of sand coming up. And another rapier-like iron shot from uh, Nick Faldo. Trundling on a little, though, bad equidistant to that of Seve. 
17, Watson, for the par. Always looked like it could be a bogey. It's a good bogey from where he was, staring a six or more in the face as soon as you're up against that wall. Could be a golfing disaster coming your way, and in the end, limits it to just a single drop stroke. Louis alongside him is going to have to work hard if he's going to avoid dropping a shot as well. No change at the top of the leaderboard. Both Jack and Tiger have part the 13th. They remain at 15 under par. Just one ahead of Nick Faldo, who, of course, has that birdie opportunity coming up at the 16th. For Watson, well, the five at 17 could, in the end, prove costly. But there's no question the round of the day, the round of the week, has come from Rory McIlroy. A brilliant final round of 63, and we can hear from Rory now. I'd sort of went through my mind on 17 that 62 would have been the lowest round in a major. Probably why I missed the putt. But yeah, it's, it was a fantastic score. I didn't get off to a flying start. I was one under, one under three at holes, and then uh, the eagle on nine really sort of turned things around for me, and uh, I just got going from there. You're just trying to go lower and lower. No sort of negative thoughts come into your head at all. That's the sort of only way I can describe it. It's like just trying to just make birdies, I suppose, and, and nothing else really comes into your mind. Yeah, th this course just, you know, I just, I just love the place. You know, I love St Andrews in general, and, uh, you know, I've, I'm coming in here with a lot of great memories. I've played well around here before, and uh, this is my best ever round around here. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just think it fits my eye really, really well. You know, the, the second shots, you know, as long as you put your ball in the fairway here, you know, the second shots seem to, Seemed to set up well for me. Wonderful round of golf from uh, McElroy, but he's going to come up uh, a little shy, as these two probably will. And they've made their way to 18, ready for the approaches. John Daly, second shot at 18. Well done, JD. Jordan, an awful long way left here. If you hit it out of bounds left off the 18th tee at the old course, you will be remembered. <laughs> There's someone remembered for doing it off the first tee, that's for sure. There surely is. Easy, you two. I've already managed to miss that far way off the 18th tee. I think you'll be kind not saying anything. Oh, we've all missed it ten times to the right, but to the left. He's had some dramatic moments uh, in what is a young career. You just wonder if he's got something special in these fingers at the 18th nut. He's got a lot of loft, so he's going up with it. Going to try and carry it. One. Yeah, keep down, please. Come on, guys. Hey, you've been told three or four times now. Come on. Please. He does a lot very well. But wedge play is right up there with the very best of them. What an atmosphere. There's nothing like the open, and the open for the ages is even better. Oh, that was always the problem by trying to go in the high route. Got to carry that ball past the flag. Get back to the final group once again. Nicholas has had a, a good look at this on both sides of the hole. You know, and it's interesting that no one's really ever copied Jack's putting stance and stroke, and yet he's one of the greatest putters of all time. Done. 
Rather weak one from uh, Jack. Just up and out of that a touch early. How often do you think these two would play where they can look across at their playing partner and feel like they've met their match? <laughs> uh, never for these two. <laughs> they wouldn't think that way. <laughs> It was a wonderful third shot from Woods, inventive, coaxing it up the hill, judging the curve from right to left. And it's three birdies and five holes to start the back lane, and Tiger Woods hits the front. I'm standing just to the right of the 16th green. Nick Faldo with the putter in hand. Long attempt for birdie, downhill right to left. Ball sets off, and he takes the pin out. It's tracking. Oh, gosh. Just needed a little bit more to hold its line. But a good putt from Nick Faldo. Little wave to the crowd. Looks like he's enjoying himself. After a birdie at 15, I think he'll take that par here. Very, very good. Typical Faldo run, not many mistakes in there. Same can be said of Ballesteros. Chance here for another birdie from right to left. If it's got the pace, if it's got it. Oh, Sevi! Half the ball hanging over the hole. His reaction there says it all. It's just a part, nothing higher than a four today on the card of Ballesteros. First time this afternoon, a worried look on the face of Ballesteros with the Woods birdie at 14, Seve now three back and Jack trailing by one. The Open is where reputations are built and history made as the world's best players battle it out for the title of Champion Golfer of the Year. Behind the scenes, the stage is set by the craftsmen and experts whose skills have always played their part since the origins of the game. Champions. Engravers, caddies, and scorers. These craftsmen and experts are the inspiration behind our new hospitality experiences, delivering the perfect setting to indulge in the finest hospitality at the world's oldest and most prestigious golf major. Origins, hospitality at the open. Jordan Spieth in the Valley of Sin by 18 after a misjudged second. And his intentions signal. Out comes the flag. Had to get to 12 under. Ooh, it was a good try. Ah, this kid makes so many long putts, you can't ever count them out. Pretty much undone by that four putt at eight early in the round. Yes, that was the showstopper. 71 for Spieth. Daly for a closing three. Can't quite finish in the style he wanted. Bogey's on 16 and 17, costing him. Just pushing him off the pace. Of course, when you're chasing Tiger and Jack, you've got to force the issue he tried to. Didn't happen this time around for John. Now the birdie's drying up on the back nine for Daly. So you wonder what the number is uh, it's going to take this championship. It's been an enthralling final day, and I've no doubt there could well be a sting in the tail. 
Watson and Oosthuizen. They've been side by side all the way around. Watson did manage to hit the front at one stage. And here he is with his tee shot at the last. A man that absolutely loves the Open Championship. I would too if I'd won five of them. Special relationship. As does this man. If you had played in five of them, you'd like them. <laughs> you don't know how accurate that really is, actually, Butch. Louis Ostazen. One claret jug to his name. And a beauty just trying to squeak onto the edge of the green. Try and make its way back down into the Valley of Sin. Time now to make the right decision uh, at 16. Now you're brave and take it down the right side which always affords the best angle into the green for the second, all over this old course uh, at St Andrews. Safe line down the left. Now they would love to play it just like the graphics there, fairway and green. First up, Tiger with the arm. Principal's nose out of play with the iron. That's good. Probably a little further back than he would have wanted, but it's a perfect sight of the flag for the second. Tiger watches on. Nicholas out with the three wood. See if he takes it down that safe left-hand side. Mannerisms never change despite the pressure. And indeed he has gone left. That's OK, it's on the short grass. Well, let's head some 400 yards further on ahead. Penultimate match, penultimate hole, and the last roll of the dice, perhaps, for Faldo and Ballesteros. Little bleeder for Faldo. Trying to just edge it left to right, catch a piece of the fairway. And he does. Beauty. It's interesting watching Faldo plot himself around a course. He's got a game plan and he just sticks to it no matter what. One of the smartest players that's ever played the game, Sebi. That's an aggressive route. Couldn't have two more contrasting players, but you've talked about the methodical way Faldo goes round. Savvy, totally different. As we have a look at Watson, his final approach of the day. And the final approach of the championship is a successful one. <laughs> Woods just shy of the principal's nose. Nicholas actually brought them into play with the club he selected off the tee. Woods first up with the approach. Lovely flat stance, doesn't often happen round here. And Twelve of the clubs never advanced sign from him either. Just leaked away in the breeze. Be able to get the butter on that one, so an opportunity perhaps for Nicholas to stamp his authority over the closing stages of this championship. Grandstands packed. Not one spare seat. All eyes on Jack.
distance control just about everything with this shot. It's not bad, it's better than that. It's fabulous. What an approach from Nicholas. Let's have a look at the tee shots of Seve and uh, Nick Falder. Seve in the rough down at the left hand side, and so much depends here on the light. Awkward angle. Left rough, not the place to be on 17. An understandable place to be, mind you. Will it slow down in time? Slow down. Ah, oh, that's beautifully judged. Could not have done any better than that from that angle, that's for sure. Wonderful shot. Deeper divot than normal for Faldo. Trying to punch this one forward and get the ball to work for him. And he's unlucky. He's just caught the face of that bank and it's taken all of the sting out of it. But there's worse places to be than that. Both players safe uh, 17. Nicholas and Woods tussling on their way down 16. And it's to 16 we go. He's had a good look at this once from beyond the hole, both sides. And that's a case of visualizing the putt and go ahead and producing your very best. Back into the breeze. Needs a good firm wrap, this one. Superb judgment of pace. It's a cast iron four for Tiger, no change. Louis Ostezen, closing hole. Trying to finish the right way. Not to be. When he needed the most, just at the end. Didn't quite happen this time around for Louis Stazen. Still a really strong showing. For me, the shot of the afternoon, the approach of Nicholas at 16. But it will be to no avail unless he can find the birdie. And he surely does right in the front door. And what a time to make a birdie three. Nicholas alongside Woods, two holes to go, the rod hole, and old Tom Morris, nothing between them. Nice big smile from uh, Jimmy Dickinson there as well. To 17 we go, Faldo, his third. Didn't quite have enough pace on it to get the help from the ground, start turning it back towards that hole. So Faldo in danger of dropping his shot here. Really was a stunning shot into the green from Seve. Not the case for Faldo. Tom Watson doesn't make his closing birdie. It's just a par, but a heroic run throughout the front line to hit the front and draw himself alongside Tiger and Jack. In the end, it's not to be Tom's year. Barosteros for birdie. Oh, just enough gas to get there. And that's the idea. Looks pretty easy in graphic form at this stage of the championship. It's an awful lot more difficult than that. This time, Jack has the honour.
It's a hole that suits his shape. He can hit that little bleeder left to right. That's ideal. So, over to you, Tiger. How aggressive will Tiger be? Looks good in the air. Will it stay in the fairway? Yes, it does. Wonderful shot by Woods. I was surprised Nicholas didn't take the driver out there. Maybe tee it down a bit, get the ball to move a, a touch left to right. Up ahead at the green, Faldo. It was a weak third shot from Faldo, not one he'd be proud of. He didn't manage to make the putt for the par. Just as Nick suggested a, a few moments ago, it is indeed a drop shot. And Faldo slips down the leaderboard. He was very unlucky with the second shot. So Jack's birdie at 16 draws him level once again with Tiger. Final pairing locked together. Final offering at uh, the Old Coast, the 18th in so many ways. We've seen it played down the years. And that's the, the norm for most, especially at this stage of a championship. Down the left centre, take your chances from there. You've got a choice of second shots. May not be long, but it's, it's asked some serious questions down the years, and who knows, may do the same again today. Two very special players about to pit their wits against it. First up, Seve. He's driven it well today. Yes, he has. He's driven the ball beautifully today. Another good one there. Nick right where he usually is, right down the middle. Did not carry the little road there, but it's gonna be fine. Many have said the further back you are, the easier the second shot becomes. And Faldo certainly can get a lot of spin on his second shot. It's having a bit further up the fairway. And of course, Jack and Tiger tussling as they come towards the 17th. This is the 17th. You get a good look at where Tiger and Jack have hidden their drives to, both of them down the left side, which makes for a more difficult second shot. Be interesting to see what route they take. Whether they go in the air or they go low with a punch. 
Safety first for Jack. Not messing around with the road, not messing around with the bunker. Experience coming to the fore there, and that's not a bad leave at all. He knew exactly what he was trying to do there, Nick. Different type of shot for Tiger in the sense he's got one or two more options on the fairway. He's got more control of the distance, the spin. Beautifully sent down the left centre, which gives him a pretty good angle into the flag. He also has the ability to be able to hit it so high, so quickly. And that tiny sliver of green that's behind the bunker, he is capable of finding. Well, he knows where Jack is. Does he choose the aggressive route? He's set up like he's looking for it. Can tell follow through driving it forward. wasn't in the plan, that definitely oh. wasn't in the plan. And the nearer that comes to the bunker, the more difficult the shot's going to be. He knows it. Just about the worst shot he's here all day long. Well, I was just about to say, it's the first real shot we've seen him out of position on. And he is definitely out of position there. And he knows it. Savvy takes the applause at uh, 18 once again. Delighted the galleries. There's cavalier swashbuckling star. How they love him. Ever since he burst onto the open scene in 76. The darling of the open championship. First with the second shot, Faldo. That's what he does. He stripes him up and down flagsticks, year in, year out, his entire career. The engraver at the ready, it's been a difficult afternoon for him because there's been no clear winner since we started the final round. Head to head, toe to toe, Nicholas and Woods at 17. And try and slingshot it around the edge of the bunker. Uh, he didn't choose to be as cute as that. Can't win the championship here, but he could have lost it if he makes a mistake. He has opened the door, though, for Jack Nicholas, and Jack's well aware of that. And I don't think we'll see Jack make a mistake. You know this, Ewan and Nick, uh, these guys practice this putt numerous times during their practice rounds because they know they're going to play 17 from here at least once or twice just to get a feel of the speed, what they need to do. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, Jack Nicholas. Tap in four. Wow. That's a brilliant putt at uh, any time but the 71st hole of the Open. Absolutely sensational touch. Pressure squarely on Tiger's shoulders now. Fires Dallas ready for his final approach of the week. Path of dust comes up. <laughs> 18, 20 feet, and it's going to be a right to lefter, but at least he's kept it below the hole. He has to rely on mistakes now. And his next job is to go ahead and knock that in for a three and see where it takes him. Wood's next job has become more difficult. It's interesting the way he played that third shot because of the fact he's so good with that little pitch shot. It just tells you how tight the lie was over there on a little bit of a downslope. Didn't even think about going at the flag. So often 
throughout his career, Tiger Woods has held the putt at the moment. You do feel like this is that moment. Hanging on to Jack's coattails here on 17. Needs this to drop, to stay with him. It's a dramatic turnaround. Nicholas picks up two shots and two holes, and he leads. Trying to lift the crowd to the feet. Not quite to be for Cynic Faldo. Once more, another brilliant performance in the Open Championship. It is indeed one shot. The Nicholas takes up the 18th. He doesn't need me to tell him the second shot was the problem. Now he's got to repair the damage. Can Savvy finish with a flourish? Let him know what it means to you, Sevi. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, was a proper celebration. Beautiful pictures at 18, but is it enough for Sevi? Probably not. An experienced Nicholas behind him, now out in front in his arm. And a thrilling finish from Biasnaros on the back nine. It's a 69 for Sevi, three under for the day, post the total of 14. And Nicholas with one to go at 16 under, one clear of Tiger. My camera looking down and we just have the one hole left to complete and uh, this championship and open for the ages. This is it. It's called Tom Morris. It's a short par four and it all looks so wonderfully simple. Down the years it's caused all sorts of problems for even the finest exponents of the game. Jack Nicholas has been here before. Tiger Woods has been here before. But Nicholas has that slender advantage after a fine four at 17. And it's Nicholas with the honour at the last. Will he take the three wood? Will he take the driver? And what lane will he take off the tee? It's an aggressive line for Jack Nicholas and a perfect tee shot. He's set the bar high. 71 holes in, and there's just a single stroke between these two greats, the two greatest. What a theatre as well for the climax. 18th hole, the old course St Andrews. What will Woods do? Will he jump off his feet trying to drive it right in front of the green? Will he just look for the proper angle to have a chance to hit his wedge in there close? We're about to find out. Has to make three, absolutely has to make three and still needs a prayer. Uh, Jack doesn't do the business with his wedges. Good drive by Tiger. But look what he has to go over. 
the Valley of the Sin. As is tradition in the open, the stewards get themselves into position there. The fans can come out onto the fairway and create the most amazing amphitheatre. The cheers go up from the grandstands for two gladiators of the game. And Nicholas has been exceptional once again today. And you could say the same of this man alongside him. They've showed patience, they've shown moments of brilliance. That's taken them clear of a stellar field. And at the end of it all, there will be joy for only one of them. Tiger's mum looks on, Nicholas first to play. Wade measured and compared throughout their careers. Tiger and Jack, who is greater? Hard to separate them, and it's the same here in the Open for the ages. Just a single stroke between the two players. Jack has the edge, though. And he could put a nail in the coffin here. I don't think you'll see Jack try and get too cute with this shot, Nick. I think you'll see this ball pass the hole, maybe a little to the right of the hole. He's probably the smartest player that's ever played. Uh, the way he's rehearsing it, he's going the low route. Steady on, steady on. My. Has that ever opened the door for Woods? And maybe this man. You know, he's not finished with it yet. Tiger's going upstairs. He's got his lofted wedge here. Yeah. Trailing by one. A time like this, we would definitely have been hoping for a shorter putt than that for Birdie. It even gets to the nerves of the greats. So, still the advantage with Jack. I'm not sure, uh, you guys would know this more than me, but I'm not sure this is a putt he may have practiced. <laughs> I don't think he anticipated being back here. Jack always one of the few players that putted with his glove on. If I had to bet on a guy to two putt to win the open, I think this would be the guy I'd bet on. Beautiful judgment, uh, pace. So easy to leave that four or five short. Let's we'll see what Tiger can do. It's going to be a, a similar line. Jack still has work to do there, but Tiger, in his heart of hearts, knows that Jack is not the man that misses those three footers or two and a half footers on the 72nd hole of the Open. He knows he needs it. It's against the odds, but to be fair, he spent his whole career going up against the odds and delivering. This is his moment. Must go in.
little bit of noise put him off, did the smart thing, walked away, went back, went through his whole process. You'll see the two practice strokes, one with the head down, second one with the head looking at the, the line. Routine is always the same. Such a difficult putt from the back of 18. Down the years, we've seen that. So the best he can do is a four. And he needs to go ahead and knock this one in and see where it takes him. Last throw of the dice. He's asked the question. Nicholas will have to haul a putt to win this. And he'll rue the approach to 17 and indeed the one to 18. The stage set, and it's Nicholas for the championship. And open for the ages, won by Jack William Nicholas. Thrilling afternoon and a worthy champion. That's how close it was. A four under par round of 68, good enough to take the title by one. And the challenge of the likes of Watson, Faldo, Oosthuizen and Spieth just fell away on the back nine. Seve flourished at the end, but it's Jack who reigns supreme in this wonderful game of golf. <laughs> Familiar walk for Jack Nicholas. Broad smile. A wonderful golfing battle out there today. Won by quite simply a great champion. For Tiger Woods, so near, yet so far. But there will be other opportunities to win at the home of golf. Maybe he's got his eyes on 2022 and the 150th Open Championship. Jack, many congratulations. Thank you, Harry. I don't know, I probably played, I think probably the best tournament I've ever played in my life this week as far as hitting a golf ball and getting the ball around the hole. And uh, I just, just didn't miss very many shots. You know, it's uh, uh, kidding people if I think that I'm on the young side of my career. Um, uh, I certainly feel like I'm maybe playing some of my best golf, but uh, uh, I've been out here a long time and I enjoy it very much. And I will continue to play for a while, but uh, uh, let's don't worry about the future right now. Let's just enjoy the present. Jack, it's been wonderful to see you winning here again. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Another momentous day for Nicholas. Got underway at the first just a few hours ago. And a good opening tee shot set him on his way. This is out of the par five fifth. Nicholas with a birdie putt, which gave him a share of the lead with Tom Watson. At the eighth, the par three, beautiful tee shot, no more than five feet, and the putter did the rest. Another telling moment, no doubt, was at the twelfth. And second shot from the right side, setting up the birdie three. And perhaps the best approach of the day came over at the 16th. Taking his tee shot left of the bunkers. So important to get the distance right. He did that and more, and it set up a birdie three that would give him, not for the first time today, a share of the lead. A mistake from Tiger at 17 meant a four at the last was good enough, and Nicholas once again with that winning feeling.
confirmation of the way it all finished. It was a, a narrow win for Jack. A thrilling afternoon uh, at the home of golf. And, of course, a 63 from young Rory McIlroy. In spite of yet another strong Sunday showing from Tiger Woods and St Andrews, it is Jack Nicklaus that is the champion golfer of the Open for the Ages. Thank you to everyone watching at home. Be sure to join us for the 149th Open at Royal St George's and the 150th Open here at the Home of Golf.